for this particular example, what we're going to do is compute the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors of this particular matrix A. Okay, so so the so-called eigenvalues. What we do is we solve a special equation. We consider the matrix A minus lambda I, where I is the identity matrix. And then we want to set its determinant equal to zero and find the values of lambda that satisfy that, or that make the determinant of A minus lambda I equal zero. Okay? So by these um, two sort of vertical lines, I mean the determinant. So let's think about the A minus lambda I. Well, we'll get a 5 minus uh, lambda there and a 2 minus lambda there. So I'll get the following. So it's a 2 by 2 determinant. It's this times this minus this times this. Okay, so you know sometimes you can solve these quite quickly um, if you expand out the brackets and uh, simplify. You'll get this. So again, I can just factorize there. So um, uh, if I factorize, I think I get something like this. So hopefully you can see that there's going to be two eigenvalues. Uh, say lambda equals 6, uh, lambda equals 1. And um, they're distinct. Let's say 6 and 1. Okay? Now, the next part of this uh, example is going to compute the corresponding eigenvectors. So we're going to compute some vectors from the following uh, system of equations. Okay, so we want to look for a vector v that satisfies that bottom right hand corner. So essentially we consider the, the eigenvalue separately and then compute the corresponding eigenvectors. So let's just do the case, say, lambda equals 6. Okay, this will be a minus 6i, all times v equals the 0 vector. So um, replace lambda with 6 in there, I can form kind of my uh, coefficient matrix. So it'll be um, minus 1, minus 4 down the diagonal, and 2 is everywhere else. So if you see, I've got two equations there that basically say the same thing. So V1 from the first um, row, V1 is going to be 2V2. Okay, so what I can do is just choose V1 or V2 and then I can get the other one. So I'm going to choose V2 to be 1, so V1 will be 2. So our eigenvector, which I'm going to just write as um, this vector uh, V1, will be 2, 1. Okay, now for the case lambda equals 1, um, we want to solve this, so it would be a minus i times v equals the 0 vector. So it will be uh, from here, say 4, 1, 2 and 2. So say from the second row, 
you're going to get something like v2 equals minus 2v1. Okay, so let's choose, say, v1 to be 1, v2 will be negative 2. Okay? Now, the last part of this question is a small um, uh, part involving the principal axis theorem. Now, notice that this matrix is a symmetric matrix. It's transpose equals the original matrix. A transpose equals A. Okay? Now, the principal axis theorem says that under a change of variables, I can write the following quadra uh, quadratic form as a sum of squares. Okay, so this is like part uh, three now. Okay, so this is like an example of a quadratic form. Now, because this matrix is symmetric, what I can do is change the variables and write Q as the sum of squares. Now, the coefficients for those squares are just the eigenvalues. So by the principal axis theorem, I can write... This quadratic form in this, uh, sorry, let me adjust that. So that's lambda 1 times y1 squared plus lambda 2 times y2 squared. So I can write Q in this form where lambda 1 and the lambda 2 are the eigenvalues of this particular matrix. And uh, y1 and y2 are the new set of variables. Okay. Okay, now just to give you a little bit um, of extra insight there, I've written down the relationship between, say, the original variables and these new set of variables. Okay, they're related by this substitution where P is a so-called um, orthogonal matrix that can be formed from normalizing the eigenvectors uh, eigen and writing them as a matrix.